Back then, I did like 400 euros a day. I was like, shit, man, I'm the man, you know? And right now, 400 euros a day, that's that's not good for me. I just think you, you really need to evaluate your, your situation. And when you're like in a situation that it's possible that you can work your ass off, then yeah, just do it, man. So in total, from this year to now, I've done a 33K. Welcome everybody to this new student interview with Stein. Stein, amazing that you're here in our self-built studio. For sure, for sure. Here, thank, you, uh, thank you for having me. Of course, bro, of course. The world is going to know you and basically we're going to talk about you as a person, you as a dropshipper, your, your journey and uh, many more. So looking forward to start. I first want to start off with a simple question. Who is Stein? So my name is Stein, um, I'm 20 years old. Currently studying in my second year, uh, going to my second year of uh, business administration at Nijrode Business University. I'm an entrepreneur since uh, half a year now. And uh, I'm a kickboxer in my free time. I uh, really enjoy uh, sporting. I think mm -hmm. that's also really important uh, to stay fit and healthy. Definitely. For mindset also. Furthermore, who's me? Yeah. So I'm, I've grown up in uh, Driebergen. Uh, and I have went to school uh, to the Brul in uh, Zeist. Uh, I've played uh, football for 17 years now, almost. Yeah. Quit uh, last year. I have two younger brothers. Uh, they're still at high school, lovely parents. So that's a short introduction to who I am. And I'm looking forward to the interview. Amazing. So what is cool is that I also have two brothers. I still have a sister, like an extra sister, but you don't have any sisters, right? No. Big boys family. Exactly, yeah. That's Big amazing. boys family. Lots of, lots of fighting. Yeah, it's man. nice just uh, to fuck with your, uh, fuck with your <laughs> brothers. Yeah, yeah, man, I know it from playing football and everything, always a fight. You have one younger, right? Also yeah. older or yeah. two, two younger? Yeah, I'm the middle oh, one. Oh, the middle so, one, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was always fighting with football and everything, so I know how it works. But it's, it's, it's super amazing, man. Always something to do with a big family. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can always, when, like when you're bored, you can go outside uh, with your... Say, say to your younger brother, you want to play some football and then uh, hit the balls. Yeah, man, that's amazing. And like talking about your story, because of course, like we know a little bit more about your background, but you said you went to a business school mm -hmm. and how did you like start with drop shipping? So it's actually a bit different. I did not actually start for the first time with drop shipping a half a year ago. I started during COVID. A friend of mine, he uh, bought a course uh, on how to uh, do branded drop shipping with uh, clothing. Mm -hmm. And I was like at home, I was like watching all day uh, movies and doing like literally like nothing. And then yeah. still Olu was, Olu back then also already was a great friend of mine. So we hang out. Then he told me like, he was like all of a sudden he was, he was absent for like a month and I did not know why I was just chilling, you know, not doing really much. Yeah. And then we were just gymming in his backyard and then he just told me his story about how he started his own dropshipping uh, brand and how he bought the course. I was like, shit, bro, that's really fucking cool. And I, I was really interested. So I don't know, I just, we talked a lot about it and he said, yeah, you know what? I can also teach you how to do it. And yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. So that's actually how I first started dropshipping. That was in 2020. Uh, yeah, that was in 2020. I did that for three months, but the thing was, I did not invest in it myself. So Olaf van der Lande, he went on with his own journey yeah he start he went in sales and i just uh, i just started hanging out with my other friends you know entrepreneurship is you also enroll in struggles you know so yeah. i met some struggles facebook uh, ad account blocks yeah, yeah. those are the we all know them we all know fuck, them they're fucked up i encountered those struggles and um, did not overcome them i gave up quit i was in fifth grade of high school yeah so then i finished uh, high school went to university at the half of, of uh, my first year, I uh, yeah I saw your ad like or on Instagram. One of, I don't know if you, if it was yourself or one of your guys that you hired uh, on Instagram. You reached out to me. Yeah. I, at first I thought no man, not this, not another fucking guru again. <laughs> so I was just a bit skeptical. And, yeah. But I, I was interested because it was a bit different uh, than it felt. Not that you were just like sell, trying to sell me something. Then we just started the conversation. I was not really interested at that moment. But then I, just, I followed you and I was just still on my Instagram, just scrolling my feed. And then I saw like some results uh, that you promised at least a 5K day during the yeah. course. Yeah. So that really interested me. You said like a comment, blah, 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 if you want to know more about this. Yeah. So yeah, I thought, why not? Fuck it. I'm currently doing not really much. I'm really looking to do something with my life and start something. Yeah. Basically, that's how I got the first call. I heard the price and I was like, shit, I don't know. I don't have the money. <laughs> yeah. But I then I thought like, you know what, Stein, you can also do this. You can skip this and then you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Or you can do this and you will see and you can work your ass off and fuck it. 
let's do it. Yeah. So that's what I did. I made the call. I just did it. And here we, we are. We worked <laughs> and here we are. Exactly. Yeah. Here we are. That's amazing, bro. And like, it's quite interesting what you're telling me. First of all, amazing story and thanks for sharing. What I like about this story is you literally said that you already started, but then you quit. Yeah. You quit it. So it's like, true. first of all, respect for saying that because not a lot of people will say like, yeah, I did quit. And they say, yeah, I just had a little pause and you know. You, you need to be honest with yourself, right? Yeah, exactly. So like, what was the change? So first of all, why did you quit? And then what was the change for you to not only start over again, but also invest in yourself directly? So there's a lot of time in it, in between, right? So I think also back then I lived at home with my parents, lots of people also, who, yeah, like, they're, they're supportive, but they're not on the grind. Yeah, why, why did I quit there? So yeah, basically what I said, Ole van der Landen, he started in sales. That guy, he can't hold my hand forever, right? Yeah. You have to do it also on your own. You need to connect with people. That's yeah. really important, I think. We spoke to each other less and less. Then I, I touched the first obstacle, a big obstacle for me back then. I encountered it at first. I uh, Then I came up with a plan myself, tried it again, made a new Facebook ad account. Thought, okay, yes, okay, we're back on the grind. We're, we're gonna do it again, boom, two weeks later band again and in that time frame i believe i just spoke to to like ole way less and i just uh, started talking with with my other friends we were not that really that into entrepreneurship and that's okay so why did i start again because i also i always had that like that burning inner fire inner yeah, fire yeah. you yeah. know to actually create something that's yeah. that that's just a money machine that's really valuable so yeah that's basically how i started again it's quite interesting what you're saying because also I think it happens a lot that people people around them just yet then start something and then it, of course it's going to be tough in the beginning and then when they see it's tough and when they fell into like traps and everything or problems and they don't have people to talk about it like with you for yeah. instance then it can it, be it can be so frustrating yeah uh, and they can also not reach out to people that you know have that like the knowledge and everything that you need to ha to get help yeah so i think that's definitely a big one and then you basically fall back into your old routines your old friends your old like everything that is not going to help your business in the first place yeah so that's quite interesting from there you still say that you felt that inner fire so you wanted to start again yeah, sure. um like was it always drop shipping or did you always look at a lot of different business models and from there I made the decision for dropshipping or what was that state of mind? No, it, I just basically encountered dropshipping. I did like, for sure, I'm interested in the business. So any method that can make money, I'm interested in, in and how to it works. Some, some more interested, some less. So like Ole, it was just an opportunity. Like I, I became so, it sparked me. Yeah. And I just started it. Yeah, there's there's not really a specific reason. Yeah, why another another reason? Yeah, why it also I chose for it because dropshipping it involves you you don't need that much capital to start it, right? It doesn't have that, have that much startup cost. So yeah. you can really easily start your first dropshipping store also because lots of people are doing it already successfully. Yeah. So you know they're out there and they're reachable. You can contact them for questions. Not everyone is going to respond, but <laughs> they're out there. Yeah. Did you did you ever think that it was a scam? No, it depends on the guy. It's some guys they're really pushy, you know, like and they, they 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 just don't feel right. With you, I guess it just felt right. I thought like, okay, this is this is more than the average guru asks. Yeah. So yeah. I thought, okay, that that says something also about what people he wants in his course and the value the the course contains because otherwise it would be a huge scam, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, true, true. So that's the most important. Okay, cool. And then from there, you literally start your dropshipping journey, literally, yeah, literally. your dropshipping business. Like what has been the journey? Can you take us maybe with us on your Shopify dashboard to, to look like, okay, what is the overall revenue that you did? Like what was the, uh, what was the best month? What was the worst month? Like, yeah, yeah. for sure. Bro. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So when did you start with the, with the TikTok Kings program? So I bought it, I believe like I said, like, okay, let's do it in uh, December end yeah like 24th or something mm -hmm. um then i went on ski vacation after that and started grinding already in the evenings uh, after skiing building my store etc just enrolling getting to know drop shipping and being more comfortable in that but and my first revenue it came later because january it was it was really stupid it's chinese new year so yeah. in january all the fabrics close and yeah so the delivery times way later so if you're gonna sell then then 
the delivery, you're gonna get a lot of uh, return requests because delivery time is long. I hit my first, like, yeah, sort of winner. I, I believed it to be a winner. Uh, at like the end of January when I started selling really quick was like uh, the lady shaver maybe you can also pop them in, 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 <laughs> yeah, in the build we will in, do an image yeah um, so that's I believe like here you can see it here it was this was this was January the end of January and also a bit of the beginning of February so Got I it. don't know if you can see this here like one eight yeah so yeah. it's not that much but like the thing was it was a winner yeah for the people who were in TikTok if, February was the month when TikTok came with the ban wave. They started banning people for literally like nothing. So I hit my first winner. Yes, yes, I was telling them like shit. Yeah, we're, we're doing great. Yeah. And then like literally like four days in uh, in the winner, bam, your account suspended. I tried to pick it up again on another account, bam, suspended again because the product ads contains like inappropriate images. Yeah. Um, that's not what TikTok really likes. I had to quit that. Yeah. Then February was like the month struggling with my ad account. Made the decision to go to agency accounts. I believe the end of February. So then I started selling again in March. Yeah. On a good ad account that did not screw me up and found my second winner, if, mm -hmm. if you may say so. And with that, I did good. Sold like 220 orders something like that yeah. with that product I made like 8.6k uh, from that so that was really great and i had hit my first real real winner yeah and that that felt actually amazing like the first day i uh, like it, it performed i started also scaling it and then i had my first 1.6k day and i was like shit this this feels good this feels really good yeah so I tried to pursue that so if you then go to uh to april you actually see a, a really big dip several reasons for that i think like a winner does not last forever is my opinion so in april my with the winner i had struggles with trying to keep my winner up and i gave up on the winner we, we had xm so the focus was also a bit off my side mm -hmm. so in may i was like fuck man i'm I've, I, I really actually like really dipped out a bit also out of drop do working on my business like two and a half weeks i did not didn't do anything or did not run ads yeah so i was like shit man i I invested a lot of money in this course. Yeah. I, I can't do this time. So that's <laughs> in May. I started with an, uh, another plan. Like uh, today, uh, we're or like I started with a strategy. Like, okay, how are, are we gonna find the next winner? Uh, so I decided we're gonna find three good uh, products with three good ads and three three campaigns per day. So that's what I did. And like, if you come up with a strategy and persist, bro, the next winner I found it like on the fifth product I tested. And that was also in March, if you can see, like they, I just started again after this big dip in February and in March, after the like the fourth product I tested, it, I found the winner. Yeah, it's persisting and believing, I believe that this is made it also great with that. And then July of, or June came. I had a good winner thing was with the product like I sold already what, 150 units and then the product started to arrive. Customers started sending uh, pictures of it and they missed like a really important detail that all the girls loved. Yeah. So, they were, uh, yeah, they were not happy, happy with that. So I <laughs> needed to stop selling that because my ad account got suspended because of that reason. Yeah. I found another winner in uh, in June again. Yeah, we did great with that. Hit my uh, 3K day. That felt amazing also. Made like 1.1K on one day. And I was like, shit, bro, if I do this every day, then uh, that's nice. That's gonna feel, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, now we're in July and actually the same thing as in April. I had the retakes like one week ago. So I needed to focus on my study again for a week. So I did not really uh, advertise again. And then the winner, it is still hard to, uh, the winner that I had in June, it was hard to pick it back up again. Just started testing again to find another new winner. And yesterday, actually, I uh, found an, uh, another winner. Currently uh, doing good with that. So I believe like, yeah, it was nice. I can also show that like this was yesterday. In the morning, I had like two sales with it, mm -hmm. with like, I don't know, like four spent or something. And then I just was like, okay, it has a nice CTR, really good CPC. This uh, this product has uh, potential. And then in the evening, it started to uh, to boom, explode. Yeah, so this is today. Nice, it's nice, yeah. good conversion. I'm not even scaling right now; it's still testing. So numbers are getting better. Yeah, yeah. So I, I want I want to scale after this podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you need to scale after this podcast. Bro, so I we... need to scale. <laughs> yeah. So it's cool to hear your full story. So you have been into the program, into the dropshipping game for like six, let's say six months, maybe yeah, even like months. five, if you like with the Chinese New Year and everything. Yes. Like what yeah, were the biggest fair. biggest changes for you? Because I hear like 
a few different steins as well like the beginning stein that wanted to grind and then the stein that needed to focus like on his exams so he kind of put dropshipping to the side and then again like okay i still need to make it work so then there came like another stein that really is now yeah for sure it sounds like you're fo now more focused on getting better results than in the beginning or in between so what is the difference i think right now i have summer so i was already like at the beginning like determined to in the summer like make a lot of money that my goal i'm I'm, it's not even a goal. I know that I'm gonna make it. 28, uh, 28k uh, profit uh, this summer is going great. So that's that's what I'm gonna reach. I think it's also belief. Like at the beginning, you're. I, I was really new. At the beginning, I was also on the grind. Yeah. Really, yeah. Um, but at the beginning, yeah, you're like, you've never done such numbers before. So you need to get comfortable also with that doing doing such numbers. Like yeah. back then, I, I I did like. I can remember like with that shaver, like 400 euros a day, I was like, shit, man, I'm the man, you know? Yeah. And right now, 400 euros a day, that's that's not good for me. If it's possible, it's okay, but yeah. it's it's not where I want to go. I want to get more because I know that I can get more. So I think that is the difference between me at the beginning of the year and now, just a shift in belief and also reaching goals. So actually the biggest breakthrough was you just realizing that it's real and that yeah. it can work for you yeah, as for well sure. great that's just, a, that's just a huge one believing bro and believing and doing and then the results uh, the results will come so you just unlocked doors to new levels and now you are not happy anymore with 400 euros but you want to do <laughs> yeah. a couple of k i'm not gonna get 28k profit <laughs> with 400 euros revenue per day exactly exactly Amazing, bro. So what would you want to tell to the people that are maybe on the edge of starting and think like, do I need to do it? Yes or no? Like, what do you want to tell them? Just question yourself. Am I willing to work hard enough to reach my goals, the goals that I want? Mm -hmm. But when you're like thinking like, okay, I really like the image that these guys have or that these guys make when they're earning money that then don't do it because that I think that's not really a good motivation. If you're going just for the image, you really need to love the grind. I just think you, you really need to evaluate your, your situation. And when you're like in a situation that it's possible that you can work your ass off, then yeah, just do it, man. Yeah. Why, why not? Were you always already loving the grind or is it something that you learned along the way? Learned also. Like when I started my first business, I was like, I think a bit more weak also in mindset that I like, it's also what, what you believe, what you can handle. Are you capable of handling 12 hour work days uh, for 21 days in a row? Back then I was like way more weak that, that I like thought like, okay, four hours work, okay, this is okay. I've really done a lot. Also like, uh, yeah, I think just getting more comfortable with, with doing more work. Also accepting that pain is sometimes necessary to reach yeah. certain goals or that's not gonna be fun always. What was the biggest shift when it comes to you saying of a mo having more of a weak mindset compared to the mindset that you have n now? Like, is it reading books or is it just putting in a lot of hours? What was it for you? That's, I think, also the people who are around you because this year I went for the first time out of my parental house I lived to, to live on my own with a roommate. Uh, the mindset uh, work hard play hard we work hard uh, together in the library besides that we also party hard i think on high school there's a bit of a more not that they're, they're, the people there are, are less ambitious than on such a university i think association that i joined and all the people who are living on campus they are more ambitious in in general maybe that's something that i believe to be true got it nice how much did you do in total like what total was, yeah so in total i've done uh, from this year to now, I've done a 33K. You want to go for 28K in profit this summer? Yeah. What are your future goals when it comes to like you as a business owner and dropshipper? I believe just keeping up the grind, keeping up the work, wanting to, to go a step up higher every single time. If I do that, then I believe I will grow to climb bigger numbers. Why in the first place did you start your own business? Like what is it the thing in you, Bro. besides the inner fire, right? Yeah, yeah. Why do you want to be a business owner? I think this is part of, the, of my family. So like I am, how is it called? Uh, eigenwijs. What's uh, eigenwijs? You, you, wanna, you, want to go, you want to follow your own path. You don't like it when pe people were more less capable than you are telling you to do certain things. Yeah. I can't handle that. I get really frustrated about that. And that's also something that's in my family. My dad's also an entrepreneur. He's also like stubborn. 
he's also like stubborn as shit. Mm -hmm. uh, so that if you're watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and my uh, granddad, yeah, he's also stubborn. Yeah, it's just in the family line, the Alberts uh, family line. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I believe that I'm stubborn, but so it would not be also a great fit with me and the boss that I believe to be less capable than me. Um, and furthermore, I really want to, uh, I believe that, that you can go way higher, that, that there's way more adventure in entrepreneurship. There's way more freedom. You can go always that you want. Yeah. You, you're not like, like limited to what others, the, the playing field that others gave you. I want to do my research and, and, and pick chances and de decide what playing field I'm gonna play in. Yeah. So in this case, now it's e-commerce and dropshipping. So like your view on life is also that life is a game and if you want to play it in the right way, you need to play it on your own terms and rules, right? Yes. So for now, your vehicle to wealth is like dropshipping, e-commerce, you want to climb the ladder and become more and more successful, hit your targets. If we really look further into the future, 10 years plus, like what is the perfect picture for you? Perfect picture for me. Yeah. Well, I'm planning on being being a multimillionaire before uh, when I'm 30. I believe that I'm going to reach that for sure. Yeah. It's just keeping on climbing on the ladder. That's that's literally basically it. Keeping on the grind and keeping on grabbing the opportunities that arise. So for now, it's just uh, keeping on drop shipping, playing that game for until I'm like finished with it. Like yeah. when I when I see other opportunities uh, that are bigger than that. But in 10 years, where I where I am, yeah. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a multimillionaire. Uh huh. Uh, you say it out <laughs> here. It's the first time you're speaking out loud. But yeah, I think like I'm gonna start startups with multiple people. We're start gonna start projects with people that I believe to be have something that add value to the project itself. That also have a mindset. Like also, it's like partner up with people who fill in your weaknesses, right? When you're, you have certain skills and I have certain skills, but I have certain uh, weaknesses and you have also certain weaknesses and your strengths can fill in my weaknesses. So yeah. that's also uh, just partnering with uh, also with bigger par business partners because it's it's more fun to, to climb the ladder with like-minded people along the way, I believe. Yeah. I cannot give like really concrete like, yes, yo, this is going to be my business. Yeah, this is going to be my house and my villas <laughs> and everything. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, for sure, I'm gonna go travel the world uh, a lot. That's one thing I want to want to do, like get to know different cultures and get to understand life yeah. better. Yeah, I'm gonna be a multimillionaire. That's a, that's that's an important one because it always and provides you from like the freedom and everything, traveling. Yeah, that that is literally my reason why I want it. Yeah, I want to be free. Yeah, free bird. Yeah, bro. But I'm I'm really curious also about you. Yes, where do you want to be? Like in 10 years from now, like you're how, how you're 24, right? Or no, bro, 26, 26. 26. Yeah, bro. So like <laughs> in 10 years, I'm 30 or 36. 36. Where's the Yiska? It's 36. Of course, I'm not going to tell all my goals, but if I have one goal, it is the following thing. I want to even be, become more authentic in everything I do because I really believe in me. And I think not only on a business level, but also my personal brand, I think I can add a lot of value to the current space. I don't think there are a lot of people with a strong character, especially in the coaching game, yeah. but even more like, I mean, overall, I think we're getting weaker. I mean, you've, you've heard a lot of people talking about it, of course already, but I think mm -hmm. really strong men with strong characters and like true values. I think that's something that's going to be very important. And that's also a thing where you can separate yourself over the long run. So that's very important to me. And I've scaled now like two businesses to yeah. over seven figures. And I want to now go to the next level and scale the businesses to over eight figures and then nine figures. So yeah, is, is, that, a, is that a goal? Like in 10 years, you, you have a business that's over nine figures. Yeah. Nice. That's also what I'm curious about because you have like a lot of knowledge in in dropshipping and e-commerce. Yeah. Do you believe that that will ever like switch or are you always going to be like a big player in e -com? You know, the thing is like, it, it's actually funny because I just invested in a new mentor for 20K. As long as you are never going to accept from yourself that you are Mr. Know-it-all and that you basically say to yourself, like be, and see, be stubborn and say like, I, I already know everything, why should I invest? Mm -hmm. I think if you never, get that attitude, then there's always something to learn. 
I mean, I can even learn from you. I can learn from like new mentors and everything. So I think that's yeah, a sure. very important mindset. Of course, like if you want to stay in the game and if you want to get like the knowledge, the new knowledge about the new platforms like TikTok, for instance, but also other opportunities in the future, then you gotta be present and you gotta run the business as well, right? So that's super important for your own development, but also for the coaching business and everything. If I'm not doing it myself, then I will never be able to go to that eight or nine figures right in in revenue and everything because mm -hmm. that's just not going to happen imagine if i don't do e-commerce myself anymore right mm -hmm. and if i don't invest in new mentors that know more than me yeah like then i there will be a cap on my knowledge right yeah, so there will sure. also be a cap on my businesses but there will also be a cap on my students so that's not what i want so therefore if i always make sure that i learn more and that i keep on investing into my businesses my e-commerce businesses and the mentors that i take yeah then the growth will never end and yeah. then I can scale to eight or nine figures. Yeah. If not, then there's a cap on whatever I'm going to do. Yeah. So that's also my belief. Like if you want to keep on reaching new levels, you also need to invest like in yourself and keep on investing in yourself. Because otherwise you, what are you going to do? You cannot see what you can see, right? Yeah. So that's super important for me. Within 10 years, I want to also be into real estate, not yeah, for myself, nice. but just like to, to rent it out and everything. And mm -hmm you know, uh, have some equity in other businesses. Like, you know, I just really want to be become better into the game of business. That's like, the, it, it's a beautiful game. And you know it as well. Like, it's just like, it's never ending. There are levels, so. Become a great uh, capitalist. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. A, a big player in the, in the capital system. And, and not be ashamed about it, you know. Are there any other things that you, uh, you would like to mention, you would like to talk about? Like, do you want to give some advice to the people that are going to listen and watch this? Yeah, so if you're doubting to like invest in a course of YESC, just sit down like for an hour or longer and just start to really evaluate like your situation and your ambition. Like, is it true? Do you really want this? And if it is what you really want, but the only, but you notice that the only thing that is holding you back is what people might think of you or fear that you won't make it and just fuck it, man. Just do it. That's, that's my advice. Sounds good, man. I think it was a great interview. I think a lot of value for the people and I am going to look forward to the future's time <laughs> and the next episode where you not only hit your goal of the summer, but also become even better in yeah, e-commerce. For sure. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to say I reached it. Deal. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. I really appreciate the invite of uh, the interview. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Now, uh, now on to more, bro. Let's get it. For sure. Let's do it. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.